Canada, and we're taking a look at some of the work of Claude Roussel, one of the great Acadian artists. Now, Acadia is a culture that existed within maritime, still exists, truly by vibrant culture. And Claude Roussel was one of the pioneers, one of the leaders in a, in a cultural, visual revival of Acadian uh, arts here in New Brunswick and Maritime. Born in 1930, and this is a nice, wonderful collection of his maquettes, reflecting back probably what 50, 60 years of his career as a sculptor. Years, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Claude this is Roussel. This Charles Leroux <laughs> from the Bieberberg Art Gallery right here. So, so Claude Roussel is is really one of the most important figures in in Acadian modernism. I mean, there are many people that you could truly say they were sort of you know the father and the mother of so and so art, but Claude Roussel is truly acknowledged as the father, the pioneer of modern Acadian art. Before him, it wasn't that much. He really established it. He established the school at the University of Moncton. For decades, he was the only sculptor in Brunswick. You know, from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, he was it. And he established this sense of kind of, you know, modern play with materials, with color. Uh, he's also shown stuff around the world. He has sculptures in Korea. He has sculptures uh, in the United States. He's got stuff in Quebec and in Ontario. And he's revered among, you know, Acadian artists. So, it's a big deal, and it's a real honor to show these. As, as Will said, these are called maquettes. These are all study models for architectural pieces or sculptures. And typically, when a sculptor would do a work, they wouldn't just start building a big piece. It's kind of a misconception. They don't just go out. They usually work small scale, figure out shapes, concepts, and even materials. So if he did a large, you know, welded metal piece, he would do a small welded metal piece. Uh, a large wood carving, he would do a small wood carving. Same with stone, with wood. Uh, and, and so that's what makes this collection so interesting, is it shows his work over a period of 45 years, and it's, it's an astounding collection. Yeah. Now, it also reflects, I think, in some ways, a number of uh, Claude's interests, uh, kind of religious art, but also color, you know, that is associated with, you know, Acadian culture, this yeah. sense of vibrancy and color, which is directly about this. Yeah, I mean, almost to the point of being garish, but it's just, there's no hold back. Yeah. You just, you, you express it, yeah. And we also have the, almost like the uh, vocations that were, you know, just truly common and instrumental to Acadian culture, farming, fishing, you know, lumber, living working in the woods, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And we have family life, you know? I mean, it's just, you know, this is music. Oh, he, he, he embraced the vernacular. I mean, it wasn't trying, absolutely. And, and uh, it was all about kind of expressing this typical, you know, typical life and, you know, some sort of kind of future visions as well, but even some religious aspects as well. I mean, he got to start doing, doing religious, you know, sacred commissions. I mean, that fed him for probably about 10 years. So, so much of Acadian life and New Brunswick life was expressed in his work. Yeah, well, you know, Roman, the Roman Catholic Church is instrumental in the, the survival of the Canadian culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, Claude Mazel is Catholic, and uh, you see this obviously in his work. His other locations. He's a church on the Union Action. Yeah, the church in Sydney. Yeah, these were Stations of the Cross in Edmonston. Uh, there's a statue over there of a, a father and son of. Uh, of, uh, of a saint, uh, Is that St. Joseph. Joseph? Yeah. Uh, there's St. Joseph, there's St. Teresa over here in Plaster, which was actually done in, in Carrera Marble at the Moncton Cathedral. So, so it's a real great fusion of the sacred and the secular. Yeah, yeah. yeah an abstract art. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. And some commissions that didn't see the light of day either. I it's mean, so some of these working right is that one was for a mural at Prince Edward Island at the University, and it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for you yeah. guys. Yeah. And this one, and this one in St. John, caused an enormous kerfuffle at the time because it was too abstract, it was too bold, and and I think there may have been some resistance. You know, who's this Cajun guy coming in and telling us what to do or what to put on our city hall? But now it's become the symbol of of uh, St. John City Hall. It's called progression. It's just it's color. It's progression. He saw this as optimistic vision of what St. John could be, but they weren't ready for it. And now yeah, they are. and that would have been also the time when there's a lot of renovations going on. A lot of demolition, yeah. So very interesting. Yeah, very positive. Well, why don't you tell us uh, your, your impressions of this one here? This one's probably very, very familiar with uh, people in New Brunswick and Fredericton in particular. It seems to be an endearing uh, arrangement yeah. of a, a mama beaver and a little baby beaver mm -hmm. on a log. And I would certainly remember from when I was a child. Yeah, when well, it was in Officer Square on the uh, on the waiting pool. So yeah. this is this was his first really big, important public sculpture. Sculpture. 
It's called Beavers, because it's obvious. It was 1958, and this is a is one of the most loved sculptures in Fredericton because kids played on it. Every you know, three generations of children in Fredericton have played on this thing and remember it. This sculpture, which is still in Officer Square, although the pool is long gone, this sculpture was an official gift to Lord Beaverbrook on his 80th birthday. So uh, from the city of Fredericton, I, I, I believe it was the city, but it may have been the province. I'm actually not sure. I, I, maybe it was the province, but it was either the province or the city gave it to Beaverbrook for his 80th birthday, and of course the Beavers in Officer Square loved it. So it was also next to a statue of his, which was in there, and uh, and Roussel worked on it. Roussel at the time was you know about to start working here at the gallery, so there's all these Beaverbrook connections. But he actually carved this in his basement here in Fredericton at the time he was. Uh, the, uh, the young assistant curator at the gallery, but it's made out of uh, out of uh, Quebec limestone, and it's it's just an absolutely stunning piece because it's got a little hint of the kind of Art Deco simplification, but still very much a beaver. I mean, when you look at sometimes some abstract sculptures uh, by some artists, you say, "Oh, that guy obviously couldn't couldn't carve, couldn't build. He just he could just do do form and color." I mean, what sculpture technique does he really have? But you look at this, you realize Claude yourself could do anything because it's an absolutely brilliant depiction of the, you know, the quintessential Canadian animal. And uh, it's, it's an amazing piece. There's a large sort of extruded red abstract one. It's actually one of my favorite ones. And this one was unbuilt. This was for the nursing building at the University of Moncton in the early 1970s. And he didn't end up doing it. Of course, you need know, a proposal. The beauty of maquettes is you, it's, it takes some time, but that's also what you can sell people on the job with and for whatever reason it didn't happen, but he did end up doing this other piece over here uh, for the University of Moncton called Eros, which is out of painted Corten steel in 1971. So that happened, that one was done outside. But he did do a sculpture, although it's kind of, uh, sort of a, potentially called a mural too, out of, uh, out of sort of painted, big painted panels here in the University of Moncton, that this did end up in the nursing building in 1968. And you can see the people here in the lounge sitting next to it. And what's interesting about this one, Roussel designed it, but Hermès Gilles Chasson actually painted it. He was commissioned as a student to just paint the colors. So Chasson, it's, it's a bit of both of theirs. So it's it's interesting too because Chasson really uh, kind of with with great love and affection admits that Claude Roussel was his great uh, uh, his great mentor yeah. when he was young. And and you can see that you can see it in his work as well. Um, there's an interesting one over here that was built for the 1976 Olympics in Kingston, Ontario. Because people forget the 76 Olympics happened in Montreal, but there were a few things happened as well. The sailing uh, events happened in Kingston, oh, okay. it was on yeah. the Great Lakes. So they were in Ontario, so they commissioned this big sculpture. There's a lot of art in relation to the Olympics as well. Big public art piece on the shore, and it's called Atlantic and it was metal and polyester rods, it's pretty big. You can see from the photograph, the guy standing next to it was probably about 15 feet long, about eight feet yeah. tall. But what's interesting with that piece, that was actually a submission he gave for sculpture in the Atlantic Pavilion Expo 67. And it wasn't, it was going to happen at the end, it didn't, so he had this maquette. And then it was sitting around for about a decade, and then the Olympics called, and he said, well, how about this? And so he's, yeah, he's smart, he's efficient, he's reusing something. But it still bode really well that idea of sails, of, of ships, of waves. So yeah, it was it was an idea earlier, it didn't happen, but it finally did happen. So you can't kill a good idea. No, no, they, still, they, they hang around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, this is really nice. It's a great little introduction to uh, a whole range of things, not least of which is the importance of Claude Roussel to uh, Acadia, to New Brunswick, to Atlantic Canada, yeah. to all of Canada. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It, with the idea of resilience and and uh, and resourcefulness too. I mean, he, in the beginning, he worked a lot with some simple materials, you know, carving out of wood. But as he as he got more established, he could afford more working with metal, bronze, fiberglass, stone, epoxy, wood, uh, even paper. You know, they, there's nothing he didn't work with. He actually worked with fiberglass, cast fiberglass, vacuum formed that was left over from the Brickland, when the Brickland car company went out of business. And if you don't know the Brickland, the big going cars, Great New Brunswick story, they had all these, you know, lemon yellow and crazy bright orange, all these door panels. Lime green. Lime green, <laughs> fewer white. But he used them for, for vacuum formed fireplace. We had sculptures that were made out of Brickland pieces. I mean, it's a total New Brunswick story. That's it's amazing. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and also the overlap. I mean, Herman Gell shot a song. And, uh, uh, Herman Gell and I did an exhibition with uh, uh, Mario Dissat, who curated the road map. Oh, yeah, it keeps, it keeps it just, going. It keeps, keeps going. cycling through. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's all tied in and really beautiful with the Acadian culture. My mom is Acadian, so I'm very mm -hmm. comfortable and happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, Claude Roussel was friends with my dad. You know, and been oh, of course, he and Tom, right? they would have known each other from working here, but being these sort of really significant New Brunswick artists from sort of two different cultures, but they got along. It's a really great Canadian story where sometimes you get maybe the two solitudes in Quebec. Yeah. In New Brunswick was pretty good that, 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 that the Francophone and Anglophone got along and they consider themselves kindred spirits to a bigger story. So it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Anyway, thanks very much, John. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah.